Supreme Court has overruled the legislator and reinstated major changes to the state's minimum wage and sick leave pay. It is a victory for minimum wage workers and possibly for those who rely on tips, but there is some debate about that last part. Yeah, the conversation continues and joining us now with a deep dive of what this means for workers and also for businesses is Ahmed Shehab, a senior attorney with Miller Canfield. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So this would be a major change, changing the whole scope of things for those employees. What are your thoughts on us getting to this point? Yeah, so originally the uh, legislation had tried to increase minimum wage and tried to provide greater benefits for sick time leave for employees. The legislator then adopted the legislation and then repealed it and instituted um, less protections for employees in terms of minimum wage and uh, less liberal policies for sick time. Uh, so now I think a lot of employees around the state will be benefiting from higher minimum wages and as well as greater uh, sick time leave protections. Yeah, let's talk about tipped workers because that will really change quite a bit. Uh, currently tipped workers like restaurant servers and others make lower than the minimum wage, significantly lower, maybe a few bucks an hour, and they yes. kind of rely on those tips. So what will this all mean for them? Yeah, so currently tipped employees make under $4 an hour. Um, come 2029, according to the Supreme Court opinion, tipped employees will be on the same wage scale for the minimum wage earners. Uh, so, and then every year, um, starting February 2025 and going up every other year, they will earn a significantly higher percentage relative to the current minimum wage. Wow, okay, that's something a lot of people have been fighting for, but it's also something that others are a little concerned about. Do you see any fallout once it actually is in place? Uh, I, see, I see that there's going to be probably an attempt by uh, restaurant owners and employees to try to work out uh, ways to come up with arrangements where they have tip pooling or ways to uh, coordinate the minimum wage payments with the tip pool, with the tip payments as well. All right. Uh, based on your following of this for how long it's been going on, for years at this point, uh, will there be any challenges? Can there be at this point? This was a state Supreme Court ruling. So the Michigan legislator could presumably try to come up with ways to uh, um, try to amend the laws. Obviously, they can uh, propose and initiate laws. Whether they can be successfully passed or not depends, obviously, on the political makeup of the legislator and the, the governor. But at this point, um, the law will be come into play February 2025, the Michigan Supreme Court gave the uh, state the opportunity to come up with uh, time for the businesses and employers to get, get used to the new law. Yeah, they're going to yeah. have to definitely adjust. Uh, some of the opponents are arguing that this will hurt business in the long run. Do you think that they have a point there? Some of the restaurant work, some of the restaurants um, have come out and said that they may have to lay off employees because of the, of the higher wages. and. Um, so, so other other employers have also said that the minimum wage may affect their ability to retain certain employees. Uh, on the flip side of that, having higher minimum wages may attract more employees to uh, menial positions that previously didn't attract as much employees. Yeah. How about the sick leave time? There, there's an increase and in certain businesses that used to be exempt are no longer. Yes. What do you think the ripple effects might be there? So currently the Paid Medical Leave Act only applies to employers with 50 or more employees. The new law, which is called the Earn Sick Time Act, will basically apply to virtually all employers because the definition is much more significantly expanded and it will require for the employer to give in every employee who works 30 or more hours one hour of paid sick time and it, ex it expands the opportunity for employees to exercise their sick time leave to go to mental health counseling to um, take care of grandfathers or who are sick relatives or others as opposed to the FMLA which is the fe fe famous federal law which does not offer paid medical leave. You know, there's been a lot of back and forth when it comes to just tipping in general, and tipping culture is often scrutinized. Uh, with this being a, a just big change in terms of the culture as we know it for going to these types of businesses, do you think there will be issues in terms of people feeling like they don't need to tip anymore? Yeah, to the extent people find out about this, yeah, that, that they may uh, decide that uh, they're already making the minimum wage or they're making close to it, uh, why would I give them um, an additional money? Come 2029, if the law's not changed, the tipped employees will earn, in addition to the minimum wage, their tips. So that would be a significantly higher amount than just the minimum wage. Sure. Have you heard any reactions since this law was struck down? Uh, yes, I've heard also from various uh, industry groups and... Um, uh, lobby groups, some oppose, some are happy. Mothering Justice, who litigated this case, was extremely happy. 
They said hundreds of thousands of Michiganders will benefit from this, from these new laws, and it stands to see to what extent um, the ordinary Michigander will, uh, will, will, will receive this law. Sure. Well, we will hear some reaction from some regular Michiganders tonight at 11, so tune in for that. Ahmed Shehab, senior attorney with Miller Canfield. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.